Turnus. <clears throat> I'm Captain Eddie Castle and welcome to my shop. I got a few things to tell you today. Number one, I got some balls. Yep, guys all hype. Man, you got balls. Yeah, I do. I've got some balls. These I believe are maple. And I believe they're maple because I think I spun them five years ago before I got a brain problem. And I did them with a spear cutter. And uh, I showed you how to do that. And this is what I ended up with. In a minute, I want to show you how we're going to make them look really, really, really good. All you have to do, you know the deal, you got to watch. You really got some balls. There they are. Yeah. Come on, get your mouth out of seventh grade. All right, that's it. Good, the bad, no, good, the bad, and it is ugly. But we're going to show you a little something about these. We spun these spears out of some blocks of wood that I got mailed into me. Because you wood turners treat me so nice. You mail me all kinds of pieces of wood and stuff you want me to try, something from where you have, where you're at, or what you grow, or whatever. And you send it on to me, and I'm, I'm going to try to make something out of it. And I do appreciate that. Somebody sent me these blocks of wood, and I just bought a spear cutter at the SWAT meeting. And then I came home and I did it and showed you a video of how to turn a sphere with the spear cutter. And since I've done that, I've gotten pretty good at it. I now know how to make the first cut and then keep all my settings, rechuck the piece, and make the next cut. Well, it's on a video. But I want to show you today is how to finish them out because my deal is if you can hold it you can turn it right okay that's what we're going along with and I got a lot of input back when the last I put some photographs up of your work if you've got photographs of your work and you want to share them with me it's here on the, in, in, in email right here this address right here capmedicastellan at gmail.com only that address send me the picture and I'll try to use it, try to fit it into the next program. But about once a month, I'm going to get those down and load them up. And, and by the way, I did hear from you guys about the clicker. Remember the clicker? To watch those videos. See that? It's a picture of, you know, that was Jackie Vernon on the Ed Sullivan Show. Jackie Vernon, remember that? Yeah. Yeah, if you're old as rocks like I am, you do get to, you can remember those things. And I did mention that I want to get one in color, and he tells me that Ed Sullivan was in black and white, so I can't get this in color. So, uh, we'll keep going. All right, we got that, and uh, there's another note I had on the sheet here to tell you about. Uh, SWAT. S-W-A-T. That's not that thing on TV on Wednesday nights, no. It's not that. This is Southwest Association of Turners. Southwest Association of Turners. S-W-A-T. U R N E R S dot O R G. See this address? S W A T U R N E R S dot O R G. Yeah, that's their website. This is a group of maybe 30 organizations or clubs. Some clubs are not really organizations. But they get together once a year, normally the last weekend in August, and they hold a symposium in Waco, Texas. My opinion, I've been to many of these symposiums, I've been to almost all of them. It is the best put, best produced program ever. Why? The level of demonstrators from the top to the middle. There are no bottom demonstrators, from the top to the middle. All these guys are good, they all want to share their ideas, they'll talk to you about it. They don't say, oh no, you gotta wait till I do the demonstration about that. No, they, they, there's no little bitty thing I'm holding up now. They just do what they gotta do. If you got a question, you can ask it. If you got a problem, you can bring it. If you got a tool you don't know how to sharpen, bring it there. They'll show you how to sharpen that tool. They will. There's people there selling tools, wood, cutters, sandpaper, roof nozzles there with bottle stoppers, acrylic plastics. Everybody that's somebody that you need to know in wood turning is at SWAT. It's August uh, 22 through 25 at the Waco Convention Center in Waco, Texas. That's a great town to visit. It's kind of hot. Good thing you can go outside. 
and see that. Now we're going to do this with these balls. I want to show you the rig. I'm going to move you over here so you can see the rig. You got it? You got it. Let's get started back here at the lathe. And the other day I told you I had a, a moisture problem and I was getting a lot of corrosion on the bed of my lathe and things were sticking because the humidity down here some days you can cut through. Um, so I, a guy called me yesterday and he said, go get just some of this. Bow Shield T9. This is a Boeing aircraft company product. Boeing Shield T9. And it doesn't leave a residue that will track onto my wood, which is really good. I used it with the scotch Bright pad and cleaned off the pad, the, the, the lake beds and the ways and all. And then I let it set up overnight and then I buffed it off just with a cloth. Night and day. Night and day. This has been my week for talking to people about technical things. I mean, one way the other day fixed my controller by remote control. I mean, from up in one way, the guy got on the phone with me, stayed with me, told me what to move, how to test it, how to fix it, and get it done. And you don't get that kind of service from some companies. But I got it from one way, and that's why I'm with one way. Now, this is where I'm going to hold this ball in. Now, this is the ball I put a finish on. Take a close look at these. Yeah, you're looking at my balls. All right. This and this are identical. They are. See that ball? You can see the chatoyance coming through? This ball is kind of flat and dumb. Right? Okay. Now, this is really isn't polished all the way out. I've got about three or four coats of CA on it. Uh, I'm going to let it cook or cure for a day or so, and then I'm going to take my real fine scotch bright pad and buff it. Sitting here just watching the world go on and buff it on out, and then I'm going to put it back in between them, and I'll show you how to finish it, and I'm going to put a couple more coats on. That really sparkles. It's got a lot of chatoyance to it, a lot of cat's eye, a lot of... Uh, it's beauty of the wood. That's what I'm trying to do. All right, now, this one is the same product, same rake, but it's not sanded out, and it's been wet, it's been water. I pulled it out of a bucket of water. I see a watermark on it from where it was sitting in the water, so it's been exposed to a lot of abuse, and since I turned it probably five or six years ago. Now, I want to clean it up. Oh, I got a great thing. If you're holding, putting a ball down on a table, that cap from that bio shield it works great to hold the balls. Um, this is the rig. Now, I was making this rig to run my vacuum chuck through and put it on my vacuum rig, and I'm missing one little part to make it work. And it's back here, and I'm back cleaning up the shop. And as I'm cleaning up and throwing things away, I just threw away a thousand dollars worth of grinding wheels about ten minutes ago because. I can't be sure they're safe. I'm not going to take a chance. But I was going to put this on a vacuum chuck, and then I could bring this up, turn on a vacuum, and whoop, behold, right there. That's how I've done it before. Then I got to thinking, maybe all you wood turners don't have a vacuum chuck. And I don't want to tell you that you got to go buy a $100 pump and $50 of parts or $60 of parts or go to catalog services or all that. No, I want to keep this where it's basic. All right? So... Here is the rig. I got a little face plate and I've got a piece of two inch coupler. It's two and three eighths of an inch wide here at the widest point. Two inch coupler is a, it's a plumbing product, right? Okay, because plumbing products are really great for us. And I'm holding it in my one way strong old chuck. Now, this was already made to be a, a vacuum chuck, so I'd already put a, a lip on it, bored it through, kind of sunk that, and everything else. And I was looking for a gasket material for it, and I can't find what I used to get. Funny, been sick for a while, the company's gone. All right, But I went to the hardware store, the Ace Hardware, and I found this gasket material that they sell in the plumbing department. And I surfaced that up a little bit, and I glued it on with spray glue. What is it called? Number 77 Spray Glue by 3M. I like that product, okay? Now, I've got the nipple. On a faceplate. This can be wood, doesn't have to be plastic or acrylic or anything else, it can be wood. <clears throat> if you don't want to do the faceplate, that's okay. You don't have to. This will fit 
in there. This will go right in there and clamp it down. And then true it up and use it. You don't need to go through any other labor. I'm, I'm, I don't want to make gizmos and gadgets because I want to make gizmos and gadgets. I enjoy it, but hey, I like to turn the wood and make shavings. All right, now, I am going to I'll put that into my chuck. Now, isn't it nice to see the lace spin the ice? Got it up at probably about 800 RPMs. That's where I want to be for sanding. Uh, not too fast. Sanding fast just heats up wood. Um, all right, I got the pad and as glued in. Now to hold it in place while it was drying, I put it between the points. The points. Uh, did I skip over something? Probably so. This is the other half. You see that pad? That pad is in a small dish that I cut that would practically match my ball. You see that? Now I don't want to have a little one because I don't want a burn mark on the ball when it rotates. I don't want a big one because I don't want to be in the way what I'm sanding. So I just kind of went, eh, yeah, that's about right size. You want a percentage? Here it is. Here's the mathematical formula for working out the dim dimension and a percentage. Okay, it's right here. Right in front of you. It's a different color ink. Alright, um, we got that done. Now, what is that on? That's on a block of wood that I spun on this side of my, on my lathe. I just rounded this off, put the dish in it. Then I drilled the 5 8 hole in the middle of it. 5 8 That's it right there. Then what did I do? A 5 8 hole, and I went to the shop. Actually, I went to Ace Hardware Store, and I bought a 3 quarter 10 traditional tap. This one's kind of rusty, because it doesn't see any machining use, and I've oiled it. This 3 quarter 10 tap is what I, while it was still being held, like this. I went in and put the three-quarter tap, put the center on it, brought it up real slowly and turned it with a crescent wrench. I have a metric and a standard. I used the standard. Crescent wrench and I thread it in. Don't push too hard. You don't want to tear up the threads. This is a piece of mahogany. Right? It holds the threads really nice. So I could go in and thread it. See it threaded in there? Yeah, there you go. You see it? All right. That is threaded three quarter ten. The three quarter ten fits onto my revolving center, which this is a one way revolving center. They're also made by Jet or Black and Decker and Robust and a couple other folks. The revolving center allows, now I got the pin in it to hold it, allows me to thread this on. See that? Okay. Then I pull my pin out. Now it revolves, right? Okay. Now, you see where I'm going? I've got this being held here. This will put pressure up against it, and we'll be ready to sand. The goal here in my shop is to show you how to turn wood without buying a lot of fancy gizmos, gadgets, and fixtures. I mean, big guy productions, the people I work for, well, the woman I work for, that's management. We sell carbide cutters. We probably sell more than anybody else combined, or everybody else combined. We have lowest prices on the planet. We have great carbide steel cutters, and we have a great variety. And the deal is this. I can come out here and do this and not have to work really. They steal. But I'm out here to show you how to do things inexpensively. So say we made this. And we put the, the revolving center on it. But I didn't want to go to the hardware store and buy this. Right. Because I want to keep money down. So I got another block of wood. And I made another one just like this. And put it over here in my revolving center. In my one-way jaws. And bingo. I'm holding between two pads again. This one with three rules. This one makes contact and revolves with the powers, the, 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 uh, the lathe. All right. It's another way to save some bucks. Aha! Uh -huh. You say you don't have a one-way stronghold chuck. What do we do? Well, let me see. It's right here. Uh, gotta pardon me. I wasn't ready for this. This is a bottle stopper mandrel. I get this from Ruth Niles. 
Ruth Nows is a sweet lady up in the Northeast, and she sells wine bottle stoppers. And don't be fooled by anybody else's name. Ruth Niles is the one you want to go to. She's got these mandrels. In fact, I know the machinist that makes these things for her. She's got these mandrels, and they have a little flute cut in them where they... We'll go see how you can turn that. See the little cut? So it'll thread into wood. So you don't need a die for it. You can get the drill bit the right size, too. And you drill a hole. I got a block, I got a block ready for this. I got one ready for this. I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. All right. You drill the right size hole. Got that? Okay. And then you put it on and you thread this in there. Boy, is this nice, huh? Thread it right in. Where am I going? I'm going to take a left at the corner, okay? That's in there. Now, this goes into a, the headstock, number two. They make them in different sizes. And I put a draw bar on it to pull it into the headstock and hold it. And then I can face this off to hold the pad. So I'm here holding a pad, I'm there holding a pad, and I can put the block between them. You'll understand that in a minute. But we brought the cost down from $200, $300, $400 down to about the price of a mandrel and a block of wood and a couple of pads. I think you can handle that. Because we're going to power up the machine, and safety is really my first priority. Can't get hurt. If I get hurt, it takes a long time to heal. Can't afford that. I don't have that long time. And I don't want you getting hurt because I'll lose a friend over this. So put on your safety glasses. Put on your shield. Put your smock on. Get all your stuff ready before you start that lathe. Make everything ready before you start that lathe. Now, we're set up. And I'm going to turn the speed down a little bit more to where we're crank very slowly. All right, now. What are we going to do? We're going to take the ball, the one that's rough, and we're going to put it in here and bring the tailstock up a little bit. I don't need a lot of pressure, but I want some pressure because I don't want this to spin. If it spins, it moves spin. If this and this go different speeds, this is going to leave a mark on this one. Got it? So I don't want that mark. I want it to be about right so I can sand it. Then I'm going to come in here. I'm going to start with this one's kind of rough. I'm probably going to pad off into an 80 grit and start coming up from 80. Okay, believe it or not, I had all the stuff together. What you didn't see was that what you didn't see is that drop box on the floor. Thing went everywhere. Pick it all up, start all over again. Now, I did mention taking care of your eyes and all, but also let's talk about the dust that's coming off of this. This is maple. I don't care what kind of wood it is. Dust is dust is dust. So let's do something about it. I have a little fan up there that blows down on my on my machine to blow the dust away from me slightly. But if I feel like I'm inhaling or clogging up with dust, I'll put my dust be gone soft face mask on. But because I got a top key, it's hard to do. I'm going to break the rules a little bit and not wear it right now. So a shield up. Crank up the machine, starting with 80 grit foam paper. I get this foam paper from Vince at Vince's Wooden Wonders because it contours nicely. Now before you say, what's the big deal? You're going to sand it out? I'm going to sand it out and hold it on every axis that I can so I don't have a bunch of scratch marks. And I'll undo the scratch marks. So I'm going to do it 80 grit here, shift a little bit, 80 grit again, shift a little bit, 80 grit again, shift a little bit, 80 grit again. About five or six times until I look down and everything is knocked off and shined up. And then if I got any, oh, we'll get to that. Here's the warning. I'm at 120 grit now. Pick it up so you can hear me. 
and I'm sanding it. I did the 80 by stopping it, loosening up the headstock, rotating it, stop, and did, yeah, 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 yeah. To change the axis so I'm crossing the grain. I'm going to go to 120. Caution. Do not overwork the sandpaper. If it's not sanding and you see dust coming up, you're polishing it or burnishing it. There's the dust. I'm going to give you a shortcut not to do. It's spinning, it's going pretty quick. And you think, well, if I just back off on the, head, on the tailstock a little bit, I can rotate that wall, ball by spinning. Here's the deal. It, it, it's the truth. If this ball makes contact with this wood or this wood at different speeds, it's going to do a burnish or a burn. Then you've got to get rid of that. And the burnish is not a bare spot that looks polished. It's a polished spot that is bare. Yeah. Don't take the shortcut. Stop it. Back off one turn. Rotate it. I don't go 90 degrees. I go about 51 and a quarter degrees. And, and then I tighten it back down again. And I take a good, hard look at what's on there. Now, if I got a little pit that shows that's coming up. I don't have any because I can't, I can't close in on it to show you. If I had a little pit where there was a tear and I needed to fix that tear, bear with me and we'll show you how to fix this. And this is from a cabinet shop I worked in in 1962. Yeah, I did that. Yep, I sure did that. I sure did spit on it. It's moisture. You can do water, but I always got this with me. And it will raise the grain slightly. A little puff of grain here. And that depression that's in there, if you get it wet, the depression will fill back out and puff up a little bit. It's an old cabinet maker's trick. I remember watching a guy, a lady come in, we finished a, a nice piece, and it was all veneered out and everything. And she said, what colors are going to be when you put the finish on it? He spit on it, rubbed it out. She didn't want the table after that. But that was how I was going to show what the color was going to be. All right, shield up. See the little white dust coming up? Means my paper's working. So we're all on the same page here. I've now sounded, sanded, sounded, sanded all the way up to 800 grit. Now I've got 12, 1,000 and 1,200 in a box, but I'm not dog nuts crazy. I think the 800 is going to give me a good finish. Right now I'm going to stop and take a very hard look. You see the chatoyans coming out? You see the reflectivity? You ain't seen nothing yet. But this has got a great finishing texture to it. And it was rough from the carbide cutter that cut is a spear. But, alright, i got to get through this video because it's getting chilly out here. Uh, and I want to show you what's going to happen. So quickly, I'm going to splash on a little CA just to show you the color change so you can see the chatoyans come out. Now this is, I get my CBA, my CA from Starbon out of California. You can get it there too. I'll put a little bit on this cloth and I'm going to spin her up a little bit. Not cloth, it's paper towel. That's just CA. I didn't put a seal on it or anything else. Now, before I finish this, I'm probably going to buff it back and, and put the, the, the seal on it. But did you see the difference? Did you see the change? Look at the grain of the wood flashing at you. 
sparkling, glowing, glistening. It's called chatoyance. It's the cat's eye, the reflectivity of the wood coming back out because the finish is slick as can be. There's no scratches. And I say no scratches. I've sanded it carefully. I went from 80, 120, 150, 180, 220, 320, 4, 6, and 800. Now, if I get to this point and I see any little imperfection or irregularities in it, I need, think it need to be buffed out. I'll probably dampen up a thousand grit and buff it off a little bit. Or just take my hands and massage it with the grit to get it slicked out. But that's how easy it is to take something that was rough to something like this. Now, I, buff, I buffed this down to hold it and show you some things. So i got to take, take, put the finish back on it again and polish it. And here's the beauty of CA. There is a beauty. The beauty of CA is it is the hardest finish by density, by impact, that you can apply to a piece of wood in your shop. I believe it is. Somebody might do a little chemical test and prove me wrong. It happens. But it's a very durable, hard finish, and you can build it up. Do not use the medium thick, medium and, and thick. It will not help. It will not do it. More harm than good. You want to use the super fast, super thin. I use the O2. And you want to apply many coats. And the beauty is that you apply about three coats. And then you can buff it with a scotch bright. Like this. All right. I get this at Vinning. Vince Warren Wonders. You can buff that down a little bit. Rotate it a little bit and put another coat on. Rotate a little bit. I don't want to, I'm having a little line show up here because I'm stopping here on it, not all the way to the thing. So if I crank it off a little bit, if I did down, crank it off a little bit and rotate it around, I don't want to go 90 degrees, 51 and a quarter, whatever it was. Then I can apply another coat, and you can see, now where can you see it? I want you to see this. Well, I can't move the camera right now. But it's like night and day as to where the finish is at. And it's not. And if I rotate it, put a coat on, wait a few minutes, put another coat on, I can build this coat up, buff it between the finishes, and get it slick as a ball. Really. That's what I'm looking to get. I'm looking to get it to where when I put them up, guys can say, man, you ready for this? You stand by. You got some balls. That's what they're going to say. Really. And makes a great presentation piece. Make a little hole that'll put them on in front of the, the on your counter, on a flat space in a home. You got a little flat space left, but it's nice. I'm really considering doing a set of pool balls again. I had them. I did the colors and everything else at one time. I think it would be a good glue up and turn out project. And now that I have a spear cutter and I've gotten pretty good at it, it might be a really, really good nifty project to get into. Well, I got super glue on the fingers because I was stupid enough not to put the glove on before I used the super glue. So now i got to get the, the acetone out and get it off my hands. Um, and management just came and got me and said, let's go eat some lunch. I'm not going to pass up the deal like that. But you've finished out these projects. You've learned to hold them. Develop a few jigs. And remember, if you can hold it, you can turn it. Thanks for sticking with me today in the shop as we were making shavings.